the one I received, okay? I'm told you knew of the assassination attempt on me. I will never be defeated or destroyed by any effing paranormal person now or at any time in the future. So effing be it. Okay. So I just, I let that go. I was like, I have no idea what's going on here <laughs> because I don't. Um, anyways, here is the second part of that. Just wait. I know there are going to be arrests. Just, so just wait. Brittany, Aaron, and Tiffany will be dealt with separately, which I have to be honest, sounds like a threat to those ladies, and they should look into some sort of a protection because this, this is so unhinged. I mean, it's all over the place. She goes, I know that was you, Jason F. and Hawes, in the truck. If you zoom in, you can see your face. I'm told that Jake Murray and Joe Renone will be turning over all their evidence of your psychic torture and other means of depraved cruelty. We have much physical evidence because some of you were stupid enough to use Facebook Messenger. There are also emails and text messages. So if you are part of the paranormal community, you probably already know what's going on surrounding the Conjuring House and its owner and uh, the drama and all that stuff. And if you don't know what's going on, essentially the owner of the Conjuring House, and I have to say allegedly, okay, just in case. So essentially there is allegedly mishandling of the business and the property, bullying, allegations towards staff members, threats of lawsuits, and threats of lawsuits, not just towards those who used to work there, there's also threats of lawsuits for those who may or may not currently work there at this current time and towards other third parties like some of the debunkers and whatnot. Anybody that paints this person into a negative light most likely probably has had the threat of lawsuits towards them. In addition to withholding services from customers, paying customers, whether that's tours or overnight stays, and among other issues. But now, the new thing that's going on is that this person is accusing Jason Hawes of attempting to assassinate her or threatening her safety. And it's spiraling out of hand and it's just getting worse and worse. And honestly, I feel bad for him and everyone involved because that's definitely a tough situation to be in, especially when the safety of others are a concern. And it gets very complicated. But in addition to that, during Jason Hawes' video, which I will have up here and down below, he does go on a little side rant about how he's fed up with those claiming the actions of the owner are due to possession or other paranormal elements and it is taking away her own personal accountability and is not only making matters worse but giving the person a scapegoat so they don't have to answer for all the wrongs that they have committed. That the person is naturally unhinged and claiming that it's due to the paranormal will prevent them from getting the necessary help that they truly need. Then proceeds to state that the 30 plus years he's been in the paranormal field, 99.9% .9 of the time has nothing to do with possessions and that the person needs mental health help. 
So we are gonna be talking about it. I personally feel like I offer a unique perspective in this situation because if you don't know who I am, hi, I'm Emily the Fine Art Medium. I'm a psychic medium who specializes in the paranormal, but I also have a degree in social deviance, AKA human behavior in relation to criminal behavior, criminal acts. With that being said, I also have a minor in psychology and much of the coursework between the two because they go hand in hand, there's a lot of coursework that involves criminology, psychological disorders, developmental, social psychology, and behavior, etc. Therefore, for me, I can adequately pick apart between things that are psychological and things that are paranormal. So with my background in this field and my mediumship, if you combine them all together, I can clearly see the different elements and how they intermingle with one another and so on and so forth. So I feel like, like I said, I have a unique perspective that might be able to answer some questions. Now disclaimer, I am not a licensed mental health practitioner. So everything that I say is an educated opinion and what you do with the information is up to the viewer, okay? So I just want to let you know that and of course, I have my notes. They'll be on Patreon, as always. I kind of split this video into two sections. I split the first section into the psychology part, and then the second part is the paranormal, because they oftentimes coincide with one another and interact with one another, and so on and so forth. So let's get into this. And again, due to the lack of information about the person, a proper diagnosis cannot be made. Plus, I'm not a licensed practitioner, so this will be more of an educated guess, opinion, based on what we do know, based on what is put out publicly through public interactions and social media posts. So, yeah, there's a lot to dissect here. Based on what I've seen through the posts and everything I just mentioned, there are elements of entitlement, narcissism, paranoia, delusion, interpersonal exploitation, lack of empathy, fragile self-esteem, the belief that people envy them, Avoidant behavior when things are or become stressful. Putting others down to make themselves look good. The avoidance of accountability. And the withdrawal from or the avoidance of situations that may make them look bad. And with all that being known, my best educated guess would be that this person, or at least she shows all signs of narcissistic personality disorder. When someone exhibits these tendencies from the list I just mentioned, there can often be additional mental health conditions that overlap causing further problems. Potential conditions can include mood disorders, anxiety, borderline personality disorder, depression, substance abuse, so on and so forth. Am I saying this person has all of these? No. I'm just saying in general, typically somebody that has NPD oftentimes have other mental health issues that work together. But not only that, these things have many consequences when not dealt with properly such as strained relationships, occupational impairment. And by that, I mean they kind of make it difficult for work relations, work relationships, 
they kind of make a toxic environment in a way that that people don't want in their working environment and so oftentimes that can hinder whether or not that person has a job or can stay at a job low self-esteem impulsive behaviors addiction etc now of course when dealing with mental health conditions issues there are always three variables that come into play and these are whether it's environmental genetic or through neurobiology and of course you can have variables that stand alone and there could only be one or you can have multiple going on at the same time now again I don't know her background but what I suspect is in their case there were allegedly environmental factors that played a role in all of this I suspect some of the signs noted previously started out as learned coping mechanisms to adapt to stressful situations as they went through child development phases and as time progressed these once temporary behaviors grew to more prominent and tenacious or unyielding behaviors with more of an effect on the person so essentially things went on most likely in the home space and as a way to adapt and deal with these stressors the person had to find a way to survive and go through their life and yeah I feel like a lot of this was learned behavior a lot of times this behavior is learned from a prominent adult figure in that person's life so they could uh, mirror their behaviors or like I said there could be any kind of stressors whether it's perceived or like actual like stressors like abuse and stuff like that as long as it is perceived the person feels like they have to protect themselves and adapt and yeah and so these things can be learned it is true that in this case mental health plays a larger role in this situation than paranormal however those who say that the paranormal plays zero parts in this issue are incorrect in my opinion while I believe that this person had their mental health issues before ever being immersed into the energy of the conjuring house I do firmly believe it has made their issues worse if you watch my content you know that I oftentimes talk about the link between trauma and spiritual oppression and how negative spirits and or entities use them to not only bypass our defenses but also use them against us in order to further their agenda whether that's using us as a food source spreading more negativity to create negative chain reactions to maintain an overall negative vibration for future oppression or feeding to gain control over a person's life because maybe they crave living like a person or they want to experience life however you want to spin it etc those with any type of mental health or physical illnesses are more likely to become targets to these negative beings because their illness essentially weakens their natural defenses offering a way in and a way to anchor themselves of course it's possible for negative beings to find a way in other than an illness and essentially cause illnesses in healthy people but in this case we're not talking about that because that's not her that doesn't fit her so we're not gonna go and talk about that part we're talking about what applies to her specifically being immersed in the negative energy of the conjuring house has made this person's delusions paranoia etc worse the negative entities can and have been feeding into these behaviors by influencing her to continue to do them 
Additionally, people with NPD, aka narcissistic personality disorder, oftentimes try to use scapegoats to escape any sort of accountability, especially when the reputation is on the line. So there's a battle between influence and lack of accountability. And what I mean by influence, so it's more pushing her to side with her id or impulses or desires that typically go against morality. They know it's wrong, and when I say they, I mean the person, not the entity. The person knows it's wrong and may even teeter-totter back and forth, but eventually give in to their desires. The influencer, which would be the entity or negative spirit, can be extremely persuasive using tactics that press all the right buttons or use things that the person is sensitive towards or feeds that person's ego. By doing this, it perpetuates a continuous cycle of negative energy output by not only their main target, but also other individuals that are negatively impacted as a result of the main target's actions and or behaviors. If you think about it, everyone involved has energy cords, tethers, whatever you wanna call them, to that location due to either working there, working for, being associated to it in some way, even if they just went there to visit or to help with building things or fixing appliance, whatever. We, as living beings, leave behind energy imprints. Chastity calls it energy shedding, same thing. And we also, because of this, have tethers, there's lines, there's strings that connect us. Those energy strings allow energy to flow back and forth. Energy strings are like a web or a root system. You don't have to be directly connected to be affected by it. As long as there is some sort of connection between the person and someone else who has any type of affiliation, you are still connected. Eventually, you'll come to realize that every single person is intertwined one way or another. But anyway, do I think the owner is possessed? Absolutely not. She still has the ability to make choices, but that doesn't mean down the line that isn't a possibility. If she doesn't get the help she needs, she could continue to feed into her delusions, paranoia, ego, etc. Especially if it helps her avoid accountability to the point where she 100% believes she's being possessed. So essentially, she can get to the point where she's believing all the bull crap that she's spewing out. And if at any point she believes or is convinced that she is possessed, having that belief is permission and invitation. And that just gives the entities and or negative spirits permission to possess her down the line and they will take any chance they can and guess what no one will believe possession is involved because narcissistic personality disorder can include the absence of accountability avoidance of stressful situations moody behavior lack of empathy delusion essentially many symptoms that are similar or the same as possession if there aren't obvious signs such as like wicked inhuman strength, speaking languages they never knew before, levitation, hidden knowledge that would be impossible to know, or things flying across the room, oftentimes possession can be missed and misdiagnosed as mental health. But it's like you can also have both simultaneously which makes it even harder. <laughs> At the end of the day, the person needs to seek assistance from a mental health professional, not only for the safety and well-being of others, but for themselves as well. Once this person can successfully work through their issues, the negative entities will be less effective in their influence, which will allow the person to heal their mind, body, and spirit and hopefully fulfill some of the lessons they were meant to learn in this lifetime and put an end to this negative cycle. 
So when Jason Hall says, oh, paranormal 99.9% has nothing to do with it. As a medium and someone who went to school for um, human behavior and uh, stuff like that, I disagree. Is it possession most of the time? No. I do agree with that. I don't think it's possession a lot of the time. And it's actually pretty rare. However, you still have influence. There are still things that negative entities can do to push people. But, again, 99.9% .9 of the time, those people have the choice. If a person's possessed, they don't have that choice anymore. They have no control anymore. But, that is not the case here. This person is not possessed. She has mental health issues that need to be addressed. And down the road, could it turn to possession? Possibly. So I'm going to leave it there. I mean, I know a lot of the things I talk about aren't widely accepted by people. Or there's a lot of people that don't believe in the paranormal or believe in demons or believe in the influence that these negative entities have on people. That's okay. If you disagree with everything I'm saying or anything I'm saying, that is okay. You are allowed to have your own opinion. But again, guys, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them down below. I will answer them as fast as I can to the best of my ability. But uh, with that being said, I'm a peace out.